time of year, you know. Um, welcome to Prospect Street United Methodist Church. We're so happy for uh, everyone to be here. It's been a busy weekend here at the church with a viewing for Ruth Haas on, yeah, on Friday night and then um, a huge funeral yesterday uh, and a meal afterwards. Um, during the week, um, uh, early in the week, Linda Kia fell at home and they had to get the squad to help her up. Um, she has sprained her ankle and due to the funeral also, there will be no harvest meal after church, after the second service today. So then it's not canceled. They're going to do it in January. And I said, we can have a Thanksgiving meal any time of the year, right? So, um, so hold on to those taste buds for the sauerkraut, for those of you who love sauerkraut. Ugh. Um, good. I, ha I have some, I know Ben doesn't. Uh, uh, yeah, there's several people who don't like it, so join my club. Um, but we can enjoy that in January. Let's open our service today by saying our mission statement together. We are united to love God, to grow in our commitment to Christ, to serve others, and welcome all people. Won't you stand as we sing praises this morning? give you an opportunity to get back there. 
We want to continue to remember the Haas family. Um, what a wonderful send-off um, we gave to Ruth yesterday. And you can see a lot of flowers around that are from um, her uh, memorial yesterday. Let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Oh Lord God, it is so good to be in your house this day. We think about those who will wake up and choose not to go into a house of worship this morning. And we think about those who have never woken up on a Sunday morning and gone into a house of worship. Lord, our world is a mess. Our focus is not on you. And when you created the heavens and the earth, you showed your glory for each and every human. You gave your life for us. And yet people think so trivi trivially about you. So today we are here to worship you and to praise you and to give you the glory. For we have no life unless it's in you. Our strength and our hope, as we just sang about, truly are in you, Lord. So let us remember that this week as we go back out into the world, into our busy lives, and help us to remember where we get our strength from. And when we turn on the news or when we walk down the street and see evil and see people not acting the right way, let us remember we have hope in you. Lord, we lift up to you all those who have lost loved ones recently. Continue to give them hope and strength. Renew their minds with memories of that loved one. We remember those who have had surgery recently, those who are injured and continue to touch their bodies and heal them. We pray for those who will be facing surgery soon. And especially today, we ask you, Lord, to touch all of our shut-ins. Give them that extra hug and let them know how much you love them. And now, Lord, we offer, offer up the prayer that you taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
your place to feel the warmth of your embrace help me find the way bring me back to you If you are able, please stand for the reading of the scripture today, which comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create for I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere youth. He who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of God from long ago for the people of God today. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. If I had not told you that this was a reading from the book of Isaiah, would you not have thought we were reading from Revelation? I hope to see some nods there. Good, because that's part of the point of me, except for those who were in Bible study, who, of course, I expect them to know it was from Isaiah. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this day, the opportunity we have to come together in your house where we can focus on the words that you have spoken so many years ago through a prophet that we are still waiting to be fulfilled. Lord, give us hope so as we leave here, we go out into our work week ready to work and to pass on your good news. In your name we pray. Amen.
on Monday, we witnessed a choosing. A choosing of one of our own in the faith, Ruth Haas. God chose her to bring her to her heavenly home. I've been thinking about that as I was even preparing on Monday for, um, for the sermon for this week. And I began to think about the theme for this year. Do you even remember what it is? It is on the wall out there in the hallway, so hopefully you have remembered it. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you, says God and appointed you so that you might bear fruit, fruit that will last. Ruth was chosen of God and bore much fruit. Having thought about that, it kind of changed my perspective of where I intended to go today. And I picked up my um, devotion, which follows the lectionary in most often, I don't follow the lectionary. That's all right. I don't even follow the bulletin. So, uh, the, yeah, it's true. <clears throat> um, but I opened it up, and was I surprised to see this reading from Isaiah? Because we have just finished a skip through Isaiah in eight weeks. And this was the passage that we closed with. And I realized the connection between this passage and our world today and thinking about Ruth. This is a message of hope. And as we head toward Thanksgiving and Advent, I think we needed to hear this message today. So let me give you a little bit of background <clears throat> as to what's going on in Isaiah. Isaiah is living in the 8th century B.C., so approximately 250, uh, sorry, 2,050 years. 2,500 years. Okay, <laughs> I got it right, finally, sorry. I, my math is never my strong suit, you know that. Gosh, I didn't have that written down. I shouldn't have relied on my memory. Israel's divided. There are only two kingdoms left. The northern kingdom, which is called Israel, and the southern kingdom, which is called Judah. And that's the area right around Jerusalem. The northern kingdom during um, Isaiah's time has been captured by the Assyrians, and it is no more. People are scattered. The only Israelites remaining are the ones in Jerusalem and around. And Isaiah is walking the streets, proclaiming the good news. Hold on, faithful ones, he says. Hold on, because God is not going to desert us. Many things happen. You have to read the book of Isaiah to figure it out. And the people are desperate. The surrounding areas of Jerusalem have already been captured. So pretty much it's Jerusalem alone and whoever could fit in to the walls and live there. The food supply was short. They even had water cut off. They had a king, Hezekiah, who because he was a good king, um, through him God saved Jerusalem at least for a while. He was good but not perfect. His biggest sin was pride. And so Isaiah begins to tell what's going to happen. He tells that not long from now, the Babylonians are going to take over Assyria, and they are going to become the world power, and they're going to come in and they are going to capture Jerusalem. And you are, for the most part, going to be taken as captives and live in Babylon. But hold on. Because you're going to be in captive 70 years. He even names that, 70 years. And you are then going to be freed by a man named Cyrus, King Cyrus, 
prince of Persia. And he is going to free you, and you are going to be able to come back to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem will be rebuilt. As Isaiah is foretelling this, Cyrus has not even been born yet. He foretells, oh, and everything that Isaiah says happens, by the way. For Isaiah also starts foretelling about a Messiah who is coming and coming as a servant. He is going to live a compassionate life helping people. He is going to die, but he is going to resurrect. Folks, he wrote this years before Jesus was born, about 500. Is that not amazing? Isaiah reminds all the Israelites that God loves all people. He says to them, you were the chosen ones and you were tasked with living a life of God, and then going out and telling everyone of God's love. But you didn't do it. You kept it to yourselves, and you thought yourselves were more important. And in this book of Isaiah, he is foretelling what's going to happen in the fairly near future, in the next 200 years. But then he's also foretelling what's going to happen in the distant future. In fact, the future so distant that we're still waiting for it to happen. That's where this passage today comes in. I'm going to summarize in that beautiful passage what he says. He's saying, hang in there, chosen ones. Things are going to get better. There is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Everything will be new. The old will be wiped away and you won't even remember it. God, even now, is continuing to create as we get to this all new place. All human life is valuable. In this new world, the basic needs are met for everyone. Young and old, abled, disabled, free, incarcerated, strong, and frail. There will be enough food and shelter and love for all. No weeping, no distress, no fear. Are you getting the picture? Children will never die. Wow. Talking with Deb, she just walked back in, talking with Deb today. Do you remember us saying that a cousin of hers had um, twins, and both of them have now died. And they had a memorial service just yesterday for them. The scripture applies to that family. Isaiah says, a hundred is young. Wow. Not that I really want to live to a hundred, but gosh, that's amazing, isn't it? Everyone working together for the good of all. This is a dream come true. Enemies will eat together. What a world that will be. And this was spoken of 2,500 years ago. I want us to pause for a moment and keep that picture in our mind. I listen to the BBC World News on the radio in the mornings because I want to get a perspective of the whole world, not just American politics. And there's a lot of stations that only give us American politics, right? So I did a quick review of the world headline news just this week because it's important. In Iran... There were demonstrations over fuel rationing. People killed. In Hong Kong, protests continue. The riots continue. 
the soldiers this week actually went out with brooms instead of rifles to help clean the streets. In Prague, there, are anti -government pro there were anti-government protests involving over 200,000 people. In Paris, it's the year anniversary of the Yellow Vest organization. And that was all over fuel prices, and they came out, and there were riots once again. In Bolivia, they called for the resignation of a president, President Morales. He resigned, and now there's uproar in that country. In Sri Lanka, they held elections, and there's rioting. In Australia, bushfires are the worst now than they've ever been. And it, it is even endangering the beautiful city of Sydney. In Venice, they've had the worst flooding for 50 years. St. Mark's Square was totally flooded, and they're even concerned for the damage done to St. Mark's Cathedral. More fighting in Israel and Gaza. Gaza fired missiles into Israel and Israel's deciding how to fight back. In the UK, for the first time in history, they're facing another general election, the second one in this year. And in the US, we're once again facing public impeachment hearings. And everywhere in the world, we're talking climate change. That is just a snapshot of what's happening in God's world. You see, in Isaiah's time, he can, he's only talking about Jerusalem and their immediate vicinity. But today, we live in a global world. God knew that we would look back and look at Isaiah's prophecy and say, wait a moment. Today, Jerusalem... The holy city is the whole world. How are we treating it? And we are in the same boat that the Israelites were in in the time of Isaiah. We think that that reading came from Revelation because we're familiar with those words. But John the Revelator knew the words of Isaiah and when he was on that Isle of Patmos and the visions came to him, they were those of modern time Isaiah. Listen how closely their words are. This is Revelation 21, 1 through 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no mourning or crying or pain. For the old order has passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. What Isaiah said so long ago came about. What John is writing here from God will come about. And it starts here and now, in our hearts, among ourselves, and as we go out into the world. Telling people, like Isaiah said, to spread the good news. We spread the good news of Jesus Christ. 
Today we hear words of comfort and hope to get us through. They're basically saying, hang in there, chosen ones. The best is yet to come. I have not forgotten you. You are mine. I am still right now in the process of making all things new. Which of those promises that you've heard today can you hold on to this week to get you through? And which of those promises can you share with another chosen one of God to help them get through their week? Let's pray. O oh Lord, our God, we are your chosen people. Lord, let us be able to live like that every day and to spread the good news to others because they are chosen also. Teach us, Lord, to live in the here and now and know that the promises that you have told us about, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, are going to be fulfilled. So let us live like we believe it. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Let us stand and sing our final song together. God is with us forever. Can we live into that this week? Let's pray. Oh Lord, your words come alive through us. So today we have heard the scripture. Let us now dwell on it and then go out into the world and live it. Help us bring these same words of comfort and hope to others who need to hear it. And we ask all this in the wonderful name of God the Father, through Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit that gives us strength. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.